Okay, let's talk about hematuria. Jess? Okay, well, why don't we talk about pseudohematuria first? So pseudohematuria, right, it looks like bleeding. Patients can come in because they're concerned they're having bleeding, um, but it can potentially be false. So um, certain dyes can do it. You know, people who are drinking beet juice sometimes can have discoloration. A hemoglobinuria can also look like that. Um, patients with hemolytic anemia, patients who are menstruating, you can see blood come back on their UA, and myoglobinuria as well. So patients with rhabdo. Um, so r with rhabdo, what you could do is with the... Yeah, uh, urine dip, you can see it's positive um, for blood, but negative for RBCs. And then it could look coat colored on exam. Um, uh, different drugs can do it. So peridium, you know, anytime you prescribe peridium, it's always a good idea to warn patients of what their urine's going to look like. Rimfampin can do it as well. And um, porphyria can also give you a brownish urine and certain laxatives. Okay, so uh, on your analysis, so if you have true hematuria with RBCs present, think about things like nephrolithiasis, cancer, nephritic syndromes. If you have no RBCs, then you may have myoglobinuria from rhabdomyolysis, or you might have hemoglobinuria from hemolytic processes like DIC, TTP, HUS, or uh, a hemolytic transfusion reaction. You can also assess hematuria by age. So, you know, in younger patients, um, you can think about glomerulonephritis, uh, UTIs, so hemorrhagic cystitis can do it. You know, patients who are kind of in the middle, they can get stones, so particularly patients who have a history of kidney stones. Um, you also want to think about carcinoma in patients who are kind of, you know, middle-aged. Um, and then, you know, in older patients, uh, prostatism is also a concern. So hematuria, other causes. Um, so you want to kind of get a good history from these patients, right? So when does it start? Is it at the beginning of urination, at the end of urination? What about color and consistency, right? Are there clots? Um, is it more brown tinge? Is it bright red? And then you want to ask about other associated things, as we talked about, things like um, drugs, you know, any kind of renal history, things of that nature. Here's a great uh, reference slide about hematuria causes by location. So systemic diseases, renal tumors, and then working your way down from the bladder to the prostate to the urethra. Great slide to look up through the uh, searchable index. Okay, so what are other characteristics of hematuria, right? We could break it up by, is it painful or is it painless? So if it's painful, we worry about things like stones or again, hemorrhagic cystitis. If it's painless, then um, this could be BPH, which I think is a very common occurrence in older men. Um, also tumors of the urinary tract and again, glomerulonephritis. And then timing. So if patients are complaining of bleeding at the beginning of urination, you want to think of urethral causes. And if it's at the end of urination, um, you know, prostate would be a huge consideration. And then throughout urination, you think about, you know, bladder, upper tract. Okay, here's a flow chart algorithm for the workup of hematuria. We don't have to go into this in detail, but this is one that you can search through the index.